Hello and welcome to episode 15 of once again the long distance stitchers. I'm Megan. I'm also Megan and I and am at home in my messy crop yeah. <laughs> We're back in our regular spots. Um, yeah, unfortunately. But we will be the short distance stitchers again, hopefully. Someday. April yes. 2024 for sure. Yeah, April 20th. Yeah, so we, we just booked our weekend too. Booked our hotel, yeah. booked our spots. We are set. And it's so exciting. So many people that we connected with this past time are returning for weekend two, as well as many people who were not able to make it this year have been booked in for weekend two. So I feel like we, we and like everyone else who was there obviously like made it look like it was the best time ever. Okay. And because it was. Like, yeah. Yeah. I also asked Google, no 335 days until April 26th. That's not that far. That's when we'll be going to fly by. I told Allie was she was sad that she couldn't come because it's not during goose break this year yeah. um, and I told her that she could just still come to Toronto and we would just have a little mini retreat with her during goose break if it was like the week after oh yeah I could I could hang out if she's still gonna come so right that would be nice, that would be nice. So, and she was like Let's maybe talk. I'll try to come and I was like you should absolutely come I was like you can come stay at my place we can have a sleepover with Megan yeah yeah, for sure. I'll, I'll buy another air mattress. We'll figure something out. Or we can cuddle. Oh, that's fine, too. Yeah, right? right. There's, okay. there's plenty of space. Are we really going to be sleeping anyway? Come on. No, we will be up all night stitching. This time <laughs> and eating pancakes, maybe. Yes. There's a lot of diners around here. Yeah. Midnight pancakes for everyone. Absolutely. Oh, I like your mug. I like your mug, too. Thank you. Um, yeah, it was a very good stitchy month for me. Um, even since Stitch North, I have maintained a pretty steady uh, clip of, uh, I've, I've only completed one thing, but I have started many things. And I've also worked on um, some older whips, some oldies but goodies, so yeah. Whereas I have six projects to show you total. Um, only three of them are cross stitch, three of them are crochet, so we'll talk about that. Um, I have not had as great of a stitchy month. I got a lot done. I did a lot of stuff, uh, yeah. a lot of progress on things and got some finishes done right after Stitch North while I was still mm -hmm. on vacation. I yeah. also did a lot of work, but that's a whole other story. Um, but then since getting home, it's just been a bit of a gong show around here. And so I have not done as much, but I do have, um, some nice things to share and hopefully a better stitchy month ahead as things level out uh at work they're not gonna level out I shouldn't say that like a fake promise to myself but at least maybe a little less work uh outside of work that would be nice that would um, at the minimum that would plus be the nice. course I'm teaching will be done uh the first week of June like the first full week and so that also means that I will have more time because right now I'm teaching six hours a week during the day so I have to make up for that for work outside of regular work hours and all that stuff yeah I did it to myself I did it to myself but better stitchy days ahead and are you completely done what you needed to be done for your um Tunisian cross stitch boot camp uh, yeah I will talk about oh. that when I show oh great yes. so, yeah I was like you still accomplished something even if it was oh oh no I have I have a big yeah. accomplishment yeah, exactly. I just don't have very many things to show. That's all. Yeah. Okay, I will show my one my one little finish, and then you can get into your uh, cross stitch finishing. Oh, yeah. Um, so I was finishing up my um uh one of my whip go calls, and you know how your mind kind of wanders, and I was like, what am I gonna stitch on next? What am I gonna do after this when my whip go is over? I have no, I have no structure in my life, which is why I love whip go. Um, and I was like, oh, I should probably get out natural world sal, and then that was not really calling to me. And then I was like, oh, maybe I'll start one of the many kits that I already have ready to go. And I was going, you know, you're just kind of going through in your mind, and I'm like, yeah, I could start that, I could start that, I could start that, and nothing was really like the one, right? And then I was on Instagram. 
and I saw, <laughs> as I do when I don't know what else to do with myself and I was scrolling and I saw a post from Noctiflora and I was like oh my god her stuff is so amazing I should buy one of her patterns and then I was like Megan stop you have one of her patterns you got it as part of the Earth Day fundraiser and you haven't started anything from the Earth Day fundraiser that you said you were going to start so you should start one of those so I started and finished Mushroom Food by Noctiflora. Oh, really? I literally could not put this down. I stitched on it for like two straight days um, while I was watching The Americans, um, which is not a very good show to cross stitch to because I don't so get- There's a lot going on. There's a lot, a lot of Russian. Right? You gotta read the TV. I don't read subtitles when I'm cross stitching. <laughs> I just listen. It's basically an audiobook. So I have no idea what happened to Nina. I still don't know what happened with her because I was not paying attention. Google, 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 it's fine. <laughs> I would tell you, but I don't remember. I watched that whole series like when it came out and I do not remember details. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah I'm almost done and I'm gonna have to like look up her like Wikipedia page to figure out what happened. Um but yeah, so I, I stitched on this it's for beautiful. It could be about three days and it's it was a great little stitch. I I love these colors. I love these little mushrooms. Tell me what fabric and floss you used. So I taped my edges and I'm, I never thought I would be an edge taper, but it was literally falling apart in my hands. Like just string, string, really string. I really need to get you a sewing machine. I need a serger. You don't I necessarily need a, need a serger. You can just well, zig zag the sewing machine. Yeah, I could Let's just Baby steps, Megan. Sewing so yeah, machine yeah. first, then serger. Yeah, if I, yeah, a zigzag, uh, any sort of like stitch would have been better than tape but tape was what I had in the moment and I just wanted to keep stitching on it and I was like tape it is mm -hmm. um it's fine it'll be fine um this is a 28 count maybe fabric flare olive I'm not 100% sure I bought it at a shop at the embroidery seminar last year I bought two pieces from that same shop the other one is cotton candy by fabric flare it still says that on the fabric this one the part where it says what it is got cut off because it was, it was like already cut so i'm 99 percent sure that it this is also a fabric flare and i looked up like their it, different it's white, the it's white on the back it's white on the back it's printed, printed. Yeah. yeah it's definitely printed and um I looked up like what the names of the fabric flares are and this is like the closest one that was like this with is called olive i'm pretty sure it is it's got to be right so but yeah it was good to stitch on aside from like the edges kind of falling apart on me but i still have a whole bunch like this was like a big piece like this is folded over mm -hmm. um and yeah it's 28 count i'm pretty sure about that because of my coverage with two over two they're beautiful yeah so and i used all of the called for dmcs and then the border was meant to be um, Lava Rocks by Threadworks, which I did not have, but I did have Don't Sleep on Your Back from Brin and Needle that I just bought at Stitch North. So, and it's perfect. It was the perfect kind of dark blue. I love it so much. Oh, that makes me want to like pull that out, but I'm trying. It was so quick. Excessive. Like such nice, relaxing block stitching these mushies like literally I just zipped through them and then the leaves took like the longest time because there's just a lot of color changing between the two colors and me not like not wanting to count anything so but yeah it was great wonderful stitch and that was the only thing I finished love it I love it so much okay so as you know I am participating in the first most magnificent round ink circles round robin hosted by Michelle Bendy, uh, Michelle G. S Bendy Stitchy. Um, mm -hmm. And so I am part of hashtag team 14 count uh, with Danielle, Mandy, and other Michelle, Maine Moose, Mama Stitcher. Um, well, other, I other had Michelle. this month Danielle's to stitch on, which is Bloomers by Ink Circle. So I'll put the full pattern up uh, just quickly so you can see it. And then I will talk more about what I did. So this is the full pattern. Um, as you can see, uh, the vines are really more of this like sort of green toned brown hues. Uh, Danielle didn't like how that looked on her fabric. Um, and so she did a conversion. Um, so she's using two different green DMCs, which I don't have the numbers in front of me, so I won't tell you what those are. I don't know how to hold this. Uh, floss tube's so much easier when you're not doing it on Zoom. Um, so, this is bloomers. So 
Danielle sent it and she had stitched like up to this fine this way. So that's all Danielle stitching. We're doing these flowers each in a different color. So Danielle chose this lovely like buttercream yellow. Mm -hmm. And then so I stitched like from this flower down the other way. And then I chose for my flower, this is, ah, I need clips like Megan has. This is a uh, hand dyed by Rolanda, a fuchsia color. They're not named uh, the fabric, the floss of the month ones from her. So it's mm -hmm. this beautiful, deep fuchsia color. Um, and so, it yeah. looks so beautiful. I love I it. love stitching this. So I am not a person who is like generally attracted to floral mo motifs. I doubt this is a pattern I would ever pick up off the shelf and say, I want to stitch that. But mm -hmm. it was a pure delight to stitch. I loved it. Um, and, uh, this is a picture of this plus fabric, which again, I did not look to see if I know what the name of it is. Um, 14 count Ada, uh, DMCs, um, the mix of the called for and Danielle's conversion for those greens, but it was an absolutely lovely delight to stitch. So this will be getting packaged up and sent on its way to Michelle, uh, next month in June, um, as we wrap up the second round of our round robin. And then I will be receiving Mandy's pattern which is one of the roll your own ones where, so you pick your own colors to fill it in, but it's, it's basically full coverage. So when that arrives, that's like must do, because if I, if I wait too long, then it will be a stressful thing. So instead, when it, when it arrives to me in July, it will go to the top of my stitching list and mm -hmm. I will work on it until it is done. And I will, I will enjoy that one too, I promise. Mandy has laughed at herself because she didn't even really think about the fact that it's full coverage, but she really is more of a full coverage stitcher. Uh, to mm -hmm. the um, and so, yeah, right, gravitated like, she gravitated towards, towards it. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, Danielle calculated the number of stitches in all the patterns and Mand Mandy's has way more. Like you could take two of the other patterns and combine it and that's how many stitches are in there, right? So uh, yeah, well, yeah. Not a problem though, Mandy. I promise. That's why you guys are each doing just a quarter, one second. Right? Yeah. A quarter. Yeah. Okay. And then so that was my only cross stitch finish um, since we have last seen you. But I did so um, as as Megan asked, alluded to. Um, I know last time we were here, I talked about how I was worried I would not finish my Tunisian crochet quick start boot camp, as I've been calling it. Um, mm -hmm. so the patterns from AK Lori, I'm going to just remind you what I'm talking about or introducing to it if you are new. Um, so, uh, Lori picked, designed five patterns, um, for really guiding you through learning a whole bunch of different Tunisian crochet stitches. Um, and so at the end we would have five, um, five items, right? So the boomerang shawl, which, um, I conveniently have my boomerang shawl right here because none of this is washed or blocked yet. So I will show you that. I will also maybe, um, I'm gonna talk through this, then I will pause because my other, my fifth one should also be here. But so boomerang shawl, quick scarf. The last time we came together, I showed you my finish of the triangle shawl. Um, oh, I yeah. And I showed you my start of the kite shawl. And then I had the crescent shawl, which I hadn't even started. And I know I was like, oh, I'm, I'm worried, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to be done. That was all I, I am done. I am done. Yay! So I have not looked up my information, so I'm not going to be able to tell you the names of all the yarns that I used. But so this is, so the first one was, as discussed, the boomerang shawl. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is my boomerang shawl, unblocked. It is stitched with two of the colors from the um, uh, Emily Fangirl Fibers uh, Star Wars uh, yarn of the month club last year mm -hmm. um, which I loved but I really could not do another one because the shipping basically costs the same amount as the yarn and you do that every month and that's very pricey yarn anyways uh, so that is beautiful I love it it needs to get washed and blocked I might do a wash and block on this week and just leave the stuff out and as one dries do another mm -hmm. um, but so that was number one number two was the quick scarf and this one was done in, sorry, I got to figure out which way it is inside out. Uh, this one is done in um, Impeachment 2.0 from the Lemonade Shop, which is, you know, was in celebration of the second impeachment of the president we don't speak about. Um, 
So it was a scarf, but I, I prefer cowls. So I just, when I was done, connected the ends, goes on. Again, has not been washed or blocked, um, as you can tell by all these unwoven in ends, but I will put that in the queue. So that yeah. was the second one. So then I showed this last time and I was like, I was thinking about doing more rows, but I won't do more rows of the lace. That's a lie. I'm frankly right in the middle of a row right now because as um, people were posting about their finishes and things, it looks really nice when you got more rows of the lace. Mm -hmm. It's all blocked out and that end yeah, has more rows of lace. Really so this nice. is my triangle shawl. Um, so I'm working over here, adding in, um, I think I'm going to get it to where it's 10 rows and see how it looks. So I'm at like 10 sets of rows, but one, two, three, I'm at four. So I got six to go, but the lace uh, work um, doesn't slow me down anymore because I've gotten way better at my stitches. Yeah. Nice. So, so I love it. So I'm going to get that wrapped up. I wonder if I can get it wrapped up while I'm blocking the other ones. So it can go right on to blocking as well. So that was going to be in my whips. So we're down a whip for whip time. And then my kite shawl. So this is a finish. This one I know the colors for because it's more recent. So it's use the force Luke for the light one and Utini for the dark one. And so let's look at it. There's one side. Oh, and the other side. It's and a again, long one. Like, it's it's super long. It's going to be so nice. It'll it'll block out quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Quite it's quite plushy. And I love the colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm really definitely cool. going to make more of this. I really enjoyed this pattern. It was very, um, like, one, once I know I was doing, it was like I had to memorize. I didn't have to refer to anything. I just kept count of my rows. But you wouldn't necessarily even need to do that. You could just make it as big as you want, so long as you, you know, pay attention to make sure you have enough yarn to finish it off. But mm -hmm. it was very nice. And then the piece de resistance, the one that I hadn't even started yet, so this is a start and finish, is the crescent shawl. Um, I love those colors. Yeah, I will. So if I get these blocked, I will show them again. But so this I made with a set, a fade set from um, Maggie at Yarnaceous. Is it Yarnaceous yarn? Yarnaceous fibers. But you're nacious, right? Um, and so this was from she did four solstice boxes last year. So this was from whichever one was the moon box. I don't even remember what order they came in. But so it was a seven color set. Um, I did really bad math, and I should have done a lot more of the first color because I I counted it by rows, not thinking about how many you were adding four stitches each row. So I did not think about how how fast the rows got a lot bigger. Um, but so the fading through and then for the end, because I would not have had enough of the seventh color, I just faded it back. And so I ended it off with the first color, but because I put that fade in there, you can't even, right? It just looks like it's meant to be. So I also mucked up. Um, this is a knit row, like a knit section. And this section and this section are also supposed to be knit, but I did them in Tunisian simple stitch without even realizing and I thought, oh, maybe in my notes, I did the, I noted the wrong stitch. No, I noted the right stitch. I didn't even think about it. But there's that. I stitched this. I stitched a big junk, chunk of it on my way home from Ontario. Um, in the airport and on the airplane, I had like a six hour layover in Vancouver. I had coffee with a friend, um, but then I still had many hours to, to crochet. So I just worked on it the whole way home. So. I am done. I am done all five projects. I started a thing in January with the end of May deadline. It is May 27th today and I am done. I'm very proud of myself. You should be. That's awesome. Okay. So. <laughs> but especially for something that you don't like, you don't do a lot of. Like this was like a new thing that you started. Yeah, I, I did my first Tunisian crochet thing in the fall and then I have another one that I started that I have not been working on and then um, but I, I really enjoyed it, um, because it itches my brain in the right way. I like knitting, but it's slow. Yeah. Like my brain right now wants everything to be on fast. And so this, you make the thing yeah. a lot faster, right? So yeah. it really itches my brain in the right place. 
So those are my finishes. So I don't have any starts. So you want me to start? I started are now finished, right? The bloomers and the crescent shawl. So Megan has to dive in and she I has have many starts to share. I have four starts because one of my starts was it became a finish. Um so I wanted to start a bunch of Earth Day fundraiser um thingies, thingamabobs. Um so I started four of those and then I finished one. Um wait. Show me where. So uh, after I started the mushrooms, I also started Mother Nature by Marumi Designs, Miriam, which I love need her. To start. Oops. And um, um, I'll show you more of this in a minute. But I, one of the colors of sulky that I bought at Gita's after we came back from Stitch North was the one that Miriam used in her pattern. And also I happen to have 18 count Rustico um, that I had just cut because another start that you'll see in a second. Um, so it was the perfect size and it was the exact called for, well not called for, but like the ones that she used for her pattern. She's always, she is very much like do what you want. Um, but I just thought it was so interesting that I had the exact right colors. So I, I just had to do it. Um, so yeah, that's my start on mother nature. Um, I have made an error. I made her neck a little too short. Um, <laughs> so I just had to do a, a little, a little adjusting there, but I, I figured out what I needed to adjust. And it was just that one little, that one little row. It um, looks great. And she'll... I wouldn't have ever guessed. So I also... Rustic, I mean, not all fabric is created equally. And I think my fabric is longer than it is. Like my squares are longer than they are wide. Because when I'm looking at the pattern on there, I'm like, why does mine not look as squished? So actually, I think it probably will end up with the exact same look. Um, and I was, because it, they're, yeah. Um, and I was looking at, I was watching her video about this pattern, which I hadn't even watched before I was working on it. Mm -hmm. And this is a bird. This, like, it's a hidden yeah. bird. Yeah. And I didn't, there's like birds and like things like hidden. It's all, in yeah, that whole pattern. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's the part that I like screwed up. So then I was like, oh no, what if my bird looks weird? But I think my bird, bird looks, looks fine. fine. My bird looks totally fine. And then there's another one over here. So I really, I'm gonna work on this a little bit more this month because I really want to get at least like the main body part mm -hmm. finished and then there's like a big border and there's like other stuff but yeah this has been a lot of fun to work on I and it's it. my first time using sulky 12 weight um well not my first time because I did start my balloons was the, but yeah it's been it's been good but it does um I, I th think I cut my strings too long and then because they go through the fabric so much and it's rustico and it's kind of rough on the fabric and I'm they're they're tearing a lot. Is that okay. normal? I haven't experienced am that. I just a rough, am I just a rough stitcher? It could be that you are doing the hands too. Like long. I'm pulling them really and are hard. Are you stitching with two or one? Just one. One? Okay. I'm doing one over one square on 18 count. Yeah. So but yeah, I've torn like three pieces of thread already. That's strange. Not something that normally happens. But maybe I'm just a rough stitcher and it's like really stiff fabric. Like it's yeah. just like Ada. I don't know. That's I'm I assuming that's too much about it. Yeah, like it's whatever. I just like cut Get it, it and done, like... try it on another thing. Maybe it's a bad Yeah. Maybe it I, I'm... well. Wow. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. wow. Right? Or like they're just kind of like the yeah. outer strands are just sort of yeah delicate. I don't know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I started this one from Counting Puddles. I really like that one. I like the effect. I really like this I one. Um, I didn't have any of the called for floss, surprisingly. Matter. Um, so I kind of made up my own little um conversion just using very very similar ones that I had um but yeah it's just all DMC and I just I tried to get as close to the colors as I could 
and I'm doing it on so I was gonna do it on like a light blue um 16 count that I had kicking around but this is actually a bigger pattern than I thought it's like um what does it say 113 by 119 so it's actually not that small like I thought it was like a little one um so I'm doing it on my aurora borealis from the sewing shop which beautiful is beautiful Kaylee fabric um, I have lots we of will this. be talking a lot more about Kaylee shortly <laughs> yeah um and I'm also doing another one on this one but I know I have plenty of fabric so I'm not I haven't cut anything yet but um, yeah, so that's my little start. I just, that's I just like a darker blue like outline. And it's really fun because it's like very, very like geometric shaped. Um, so I just started up here. Yeah, the rhythm, right? With the shape. Yeah. yeah. Well, and this one's kind of weird because this, this portion is like um, Europe on the map. So there's like, like weird little like inlets and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm, I was a little worried about this color, just like not showing up but I think it's fine actually um but also because there's going to be like yellows and oranges and stuff yeah I, it looks really good on screen yeah. like it's popping off the fabric you're fine and I chose this corner because it had more like lighter blue than, than like the bottom the of it. So I thought that would look that would look good um yeah so that's that's been really good to stitch on and a very nice pattern and then the last one that I started was it's called green washing and it is by sprouting lupine and it looks like this so pretty um and i completely threw this palette out the window yep and have gone, do it <laughs> have gone completely rogue um so originally so i had this um this variegated dmc that I was like, oh, maybe I could do the entire pattern in this. And it was like, it's like purple and green. Um, but then I was looking at um, the like supplies list and I was like adding up because it was like half a skein, half a skein, half a skein, half a skein. And I was like, oh, I don't think one will be enough unless oh. I do it super tiny. So then I just went through like different strands of it and found like the matching colors. So like the exact same shades of DMC that are in there. And then I'm just kind of like, I just sort of went, okay, like this is a light green. So I'll do mostly light green for that one. Or like, I'll do whatever. So basically anywhere that's green is gonna be like a pretty similar green. And anywhere that's like a black or whatever is gonna be like purple basically. Okay. Nice. And I'm just sort of going, going by vibes. The best and that's my know. start and I did a middle start this is a 14 count printed ada that I got from Michael's because I like the ones that, that come like, in the tube yeah but I had I got two of this colorway and one was more green and one was more blue and this is the more blue one mm -hmm. and I really like that as a background yeah it's pretty it looks like I'm doing so much green and purple so I start and I have it all packed up because I'm gonna I'm gonna try to work on this a little bit more too because I've been really enjoying it um even though I have a million other things on the go but whatever um and again I want to at least like finish like the center motif or something before I put it away um <clears throat> so I have those and then my last start is a new sal from Owl Forest Embroidery. It's huge. Um, and I commitment. This is all Megan's fault because she put on Hugo Stitcher when she was at my house. And first no, of all, no, it's not my fault then. It's Samantha's <laughs> fault. You're right. It's Samantha's fault. So first of all, I adore Samantha. So thank you for me introducing me to her. Um, I've been just mainlining like all of her videos since the very beginning. And I'm like devastated that there's not more for me to watch. Um, I think I'm almost completely caught up. But um, so I made my own palette um, based on the the over dyed flosses that are like you can order them from owl forest but i'm not going to do that because they're in russia and uh i have so many of these beautiful over dyed flosses that i have spent all my dollars on so i'm going to use them for this pretty thing and i have also 
gone for some of the like the DMCs. If there's like a lot of it, I can kind of switch it out and just do DMCs for it. Um, and I'm using all the floss tags that we got from all of our friends uh, <laughs> at the show. So um, yeah, so I've I've made my own little floss thing. Oh, I'll show the pattern. Well, I'll show what I have of the pattern so far. Because there's two drops out now, right? There's two drops. I started I started in the top, which was uh, Michelle's idea. So that's what it. That's the the whole map, I guess. And then do I? There's a picture. Yeah. So this is what's what's been released so far. Um, and I was I posted on Instagram that I was going to start it. And Michelle, the Chinook crafter, messaged me and was like, oh, I'm going to do it too, but I'm going to wait till the second drop comes out so that I can start in the corner. And I was like, you're such a genius. Because I was looking at it. I was like yeah. looking at the map and I was like, why is there so much space at the top? Like, I don't understand. And there isn't. Like, they were like, oh, there's only one stitch above that. But the way it looked, I was that like, that the border it's of fabric, weird. right? Yeah. There's so much extra space, but it's fine. Um, so I started mine in the corner and there's like, oh, you got so much done already. Yeah. That's like an hour and a half. Nice. Almost. Nice. I had to pull out some of the border already because I was not spacing it properly, but whatever. It is what it is. But you're going to stitch that whole border all the way around. Cause I was reading the post. Not, I'm not diving in. I've got, I've got too many owl forest big yeah. trucks underway already. Um, but they were saying that if you like they're like you can do it's all awesome. you can skip yeah. the border or yeah yeah michelle said the same thing because she was like i don't really like any of the blues that i have like as an option for this like sky mm -hmm. um so she was like i don't think i'm gonna do it and then i was like i kind of like the border because it makes it look more like a treasure map and that's yeah. kind of you know what i'm into um and i for my blue i'm using um this is steel blue from the sewing shop um, which has been really, and I have like this was a big skein, so I have a lot of it. And I think if you need more, really I also have some of that. So <laughs> you can hit me up, or um, I'm sure Kaylee can sort you out as well. So I'm doing, yeah, and I'm just doing one strand. So I, yeah, I'll you should that. get you going plenty. Way. And another, so this is my 11 by 17. This is impossible for me to hold and stitch on at the same time. But I was watching the Hugo Stitcher. And she was saying how sometimes she just turns her yeah. fabric upside down and turns her pattern I upside down. I do that all so I just I, her, right? I don't. I also turn I sideways. Do. I just make it. I just make it fit what I need it to be. Yeah. Easy peasy. Yeah. So simple. Yeah. So that's been that's been great. I've just been working up from from the bottom that. there, and it's yeah, so much easier to to hold and. Yeah, and I, right, like, it's just a digital thing, so I just, like, flipped it over and then locked the screen on my iPad, and there you go, like, oh, so smart, love these girls. I, I didn't them. know you didn't know that, so, sorry, I, I sorry never, for not telling you sooner. It never would have crossed my mind to even consider something like that, and then she was saying that, and then I was like, oh, that's interesting, I like, but you know, why would you ever need I to do that? stitch things sideways? It means I have to pay more attention to how I'm crossing my stitches when I care. Yeah. Sometimes I just don't care because unless you're like this, you can't yeah. actually tell. You can't tell. Right? And these, um, yeah, the upside down is fine because it's literally the opposite. It's the exact same. Um, but yeah, I was even if you were doing it sideways, you just have to like backwards it. But I mean you just whatever. have to know. You have to pay attention, that's all. And that's easy. Everybody can do that. Everybody try mm -hmm. stitching upside down yeah it's great I love it and especially because like I like having it I was like oh I'll have it in my big frame and then I can have like most of it you know because it's nice to have everything out all at once but it's a lot to stitch on and it's a big piece of fabric so I also like having it all in one frame for that reason yeah and are they are they doing what they've done in other ones they're gonna go like down the side now um it said two three and then it was like four four and then oh it was they're like, going back and forth oh okay. yeah yeah so you will have like, to move it around i was i was wondering if you would be able to follow down the side for a while before yeah, you had to that would be nice first, but it is yeah. what it is we'll see 
I might just put it on a smaller one anyway, just because it's ridiculous. But or would is the fabric wide enough to fit across the seventeen? Almost. I think it's. I'm not sure. Maybe I'd have to check. Just another thought. Yeah, I think it's 22 inches. So yeah, I think you it would be able to, right? And then you can still have it upside down and stitch. Yeah, and still have like the from the right side rather than, I know um, with my chaos burbs, because I do have it stretched across, stitching, like when I'm holding it the right way, reaching over to stitch on the right side is annoying. So I just flip it. Yeah. Right? It's really nice. Yeah. Never would have thought of that. Yeah. I don't watch enough floss tube is what I'm also realizing. It's like, I'll watch the same three people, yes. for, right? I'll and then I- A lot more other than floss tube. Like I watch TV, right? Like I sit with my husband, we watch TV. So I watch mm -hmm. TV still, but like I used to stitch and just watch a bunch of other things, right? Yeah. Shows he's not interested and stuff like that. Movies, yeah. I don't do that anymore. I, I'm either listening to a book or I'm watching floss tube. Mm -hmm. I just don't consume other media in the <laughs> yeah. same way anymore because there's so many good floss tubers there's out there. So many good floss tubers, and I watch you all at one point five speed. So. Yeah, I think I'll start doing that too because a lot of like, but I love a long video. I actually will like. I love a long video. video. Yeah, but if I watch the long videos on one point five speed, then I get more long videos in. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'll like I'll see a video that's only like 20 minutes long and I'm like Ugh, then I have to find another one in 20 minutes <laughs> I have a very like I am working on a very carefully curated subscription list hmm. so then it just feeds right, me just the ones for my subscriptions right so that's a good idea but yeah anyway that's all I started those three awesome. things four things okay so oh. then whips um my whip pile is very small as well so we already talked about the triangle shawl right i had it in finishes i have moved back to whips and then hopefully when we see you at the end of june it will be a finish again and maybe even a blocked finish right and i will have all these beautiful scarves and it will be 30 degrees out and they will have to wait 30 canadian degrees just for the record warm hot not very hot hard. yeah too hot for some people for me right wow. so my main whip that i have been working on cross stitch wise since i finished bloomers is put my thing away for some reason silly of me is my natural world sow yay i am working i don't remember where i was i don't remember if i finished the border before we last talked but i'm working on february and march and so i've got my mountains almost done i have one i have like a back mountain here a big one and then two more little ones whoops mm -hmm. over here so those mountains should be done hopefully today nice. um, and then i'll bring across the rest of this and the borders and then there is um a cacao here and some little mushies and then I will start working down here and I'm just gonna plow along June is coming out momentarily three days four days well, four days Thursday it comes out on Thursday unless I know Christy sometimes gives them to us early so maybe Wednesday but anyways I'm just going to continue along and so I know I've said this every month for like the last three months but I think it might be manageable if I don't let myself get too distracted to get caught up in June. I believe in you. I'm taking a week off, I'm not going anywhere. I have friends coming for half of that week. I have a very important tattoo appointment. And then I have the other half of the week where I will be able to stitch a lot. So I think, I think it will be. I good. believe in you. Thank you very I think, much. I think at our last when you had like just turned the corner on that border. Yeah. So quite a bit of that one done yeah, there, well. there's a lot of border but um also the the like middle sections oh i know i have it ready to show everybody what what we're talking about <laughs> so if you don't know this is the natural world cell from christy at pixel pixie cross stitch and so it's a year-long stitch along she's doing a release every month uh for all 12 months so this is through to may but as you can see like right like that may one has no border that is going to Lie. I printed it out the other day so I would be ready mm -hmm. and I'm like there's nothing here compared to the other ones there's nothing here um and there's only a bit of border here and this border um I found when I was doing it this one a lot quicker than this one because there was yeah. less right like there's a lot more going on in the sunflowers than in the tulips so pull mm -hmm. that down and there's like there it's just it's not as dense 
as this section and these little beetles to get this stuff done. So I think right. it will go a lot faster. And I know like I stitched this first one in three, like they were long stitchy days, like they were like vacation weekend days in January, but in three days. So I know I can do this pretty quickly. Um, and so I think if I am focused on it, I will fly. Yeah. That's me. And I, <clears throat> I personally love stitching the mushrooms or sorry, the mountains because they were all right next to each other. And it oh yeah. Happen. This has like, I picked this up. So I did a little bit, a couple days, but I picked this up this morning, like over here and I been, like, two hours. I flew through that. Right. Yeah. And the bottom is like those those helixes and those feet, those are all so close together. Oh, oh, in the, yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll cool. just be yeah. cross by element, right? And I mean, if I, like, the June release will come and I'll just be able to whoop, right across, yeah. right across, right across and know where I end, so. Christy, I'm gonna catch up, I promise. Christy plans to catch up at StitchCon. Having just come from Cross Stitch Retreat where I was like, oh, I'll get so much stitching done sitting here stitching all day, Christy. I mean, I, got I wish you luck. I believe in you. Yeah. But don't be disappointed if it doesn't happen because yeah. it means you have had a ton of other fun. Yeah. And people will be like, oh my God, Christy, and I want to talk to you. And yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um, and then my other whip, um, it was our friend Jesse's birthday. I don't know if you know Jesse. We've never talked about them before. Miss Lay Pages. They're amazing. We, we talked about them. A lot. We have talked about them because you've ordered stuff from her. I'm being silly. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait. Talk Jessie about Jesse basically about every episode was my point. Yeah. Okay. Like, I was like, what are you talking about? My sarcasm was probably not as sarcastic. Anyways, so this is Jesse's first pattern. Jesse released this as part of their verb box, Springs Promise. It is beautiful swans, beautiful border with these irises and these, like, oh, this border, like the repetition is perfect. You just start going and you don't need to look at the pattern other than to know like where I'm going to end, but I'm not there yet. So fantastic. Everything about this is perfection. This fabric is renewal dyed by Jessie, Miss Lay Pages. Um, she does the best fabric, the best fabric. You can't see my face, the best fabric. It is soft, but it is like not too soft. It is... Like it doesn't, some fabrics get like a weird feel on them. I don't know if it's from the dye or what they use to condition them after, but Jesse's fabric doesn't have that. It's perfect. Anyways, um, dinghy dyes, swans, irises, everything you could want in a pattern. These are available on Jesse's shop, Um, uh, They put up the extra burr box stuff so you can get it all. Also, Jesse is having a sale until the end of the month. So if you want it, this is a good time. Go spend all your money at Jesse's shop. I will probably be spending some money at Jesse's shop, even though I don't need to spend any money. I keep telling myself I'm not going to spend money, but there, there's some things. Anyways, um, so the last time we saw it, I had a bit of this border and I had started coming down here and I had this iris, I think. So I filled in the middle iris and like my, my threads are hanging on the back for these, right? They're ready to keep going. Brought down the side border, did this iris, brought this across again, right? I'm ready to keep going on that border when I move it over. And so then I have started on the first swan. So the little face will go in here and I'm moving my finger the wrong way. The body comes down and it's beautiful. And all with the jiggy dies. Ugh, I love it. So I'm very excited to keep working on this. It's not gonna go away. I will just keep working on it um, because sometimes, especially after work so in the morning the 56 count oh i didn't talk about that this is a 56 count um olive from hand dye by rwanda is the fabric and the floss is uh hand dye by rwanda as well it's labeled as lava rock which this is blue so the name doesn't necessarily make sense to me but that's what i bought it at i'm not clear i i haven't looked lately at her shop because i'm trying to be good so i don't know if she still has that color in it but it's a beautiful variegated blue um, I don't think I said that last time. but um yeah that's that and so 56 count i am at my best at six o'clock in the morning that is shocking to some people but that is when i'm at my best so i get up every morning and i stitch before I like get ready for my day and go to work and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. This is 32 count. So this is great for eight o'clock at night when I am exhausted. 
much better than 50, 60 count. Yeah. Uh, because my eyes get tired, my brain gets tired. And so I will keep them both out and I will keep working on that as my evening project and the natural world as my morning project. Those are my whips. Not doing a lot, but maybe I'm going to be focused and get some things done, which I'm going to talk about when we talk about plants. I believe in you. Mm -hmm. um, I have a few whips. Um, and since we're talking about Jesse, I will share. I worked a little bit more on Bloom, which is Jesse's second pattern. It's also so good. Um, and I had finished up the little egg at um, Stitch North. Mm -hmm. And then I was working on it. I still had it on the hoop, so I worked on it a little bit more the other day. And I got some of the letters done. But I trapped. There we go. And I'm, I might take the pink out. Oh just, yeah, you can't, it doesn't look. Not showing up. Read it. You can't read it. Um, so I might take it out and choose a non variegated, like the actual called for pink that it was supposed to be. Cause it's Yeah, or something like, so the, on the, what would that be? Rightmost side, I think, zoom, whatever. Um, like that color, I think if it was all that pink, yeah. it would be more legible. Um, it's because it's it's the lighter color and because it's a, such a like a variegated like modeled fabric as well yeah, yeah. it's just not it looks great in the egg i love the look in the but egg. it's it's bordered in the egg right you're not against the exactly. fabric so yeah. that's so, that's what it is it's, it's blending into the background too much when you hold it really close like that i can tell what it says but partly yeah. because i know what it says too right and i, mean, I don't I know if like i didn't know that what the words were that i could distinguish them so and I feel like for something like this, like the words are the kind of the point. Yeah. Um, so I want them to be seen and read and, yeah. you know. Have Luckily, their those words are very quick and easy to stitch. Ask me how I know because I had they to were fun. And put them back in. Um, so you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, they were fun to stitch. And I love the blue and the black. I think they look like the letters yeah, are great. It looks look great. great. Yeah, the font. It's great choice. Yeah, good good I font. can't read that. So yeah. I'm going to take out the pink and I'm going to do it in a darker color. Um, and I'll, I'll, cause once I, once I do that and then I get the rest of the letters done, this is super close to a finish. So I would love to mm -hmm. finish that up soon. Um, but yeah, I worked on that for like just like an hour or so. Um, my other project that I worked on just a tiny bit, um, from this that I started at Stitch North as well was my spring flings project that I inherited from um, Steph and Michelle. So that's the, we still go on. I See, that's another one I need to pull out and work on. I need to do all the things. And I did a little bit of it when we were at the baseball game. And I did a little bit of it one other night, I think, when we were stitching. Um, so yeah, I got quite a bit done. And I still it's have... Good. This was just like, I was like, oh, I was like, no, yeah, no. I'm gonna put this away. If I get tired, I just walk away. I'm just like, I don't, I don't drop it because I use a stand. And if I drop the stand, that might be a catastrophe, but I put it away and the, the thread is just wherever the thread is. Some people are like, I have to finish my thread. And I'm like, mm -mm, my row that's, right, that's yeah. when mistakes happen. So yeah, I'm glad I don't have that problem. Uh, yeah, so I worked on that a little bit, and then I worked on my marshmallow. So oh, I had oh, yeah. started this at Stitch North, and I was working on it um, when Megan was still here. <clears throat> marshmallow world. They're so cute. Right. Stitchy. Oh, I'm once again not saying what anything is on. Uh, the it's the Brittany needle fabric, hot chocolate, and it's strain strand stravanger things floss. Oh no, this, that's not the stravanger things floss. It's the this is Brennan needle wine stain, sixteen okay. count, and this is hot chocolate from Brennan needle, also sixteen count. Is it and sixteen or is it eighteen? I think it's sixteen. Okay. I believe you. I have the tag somewhere. I am this the owner of the tag. This is called Rotten. Oiled Rotten, yeah. This is called Stranger like Things is the other one. It looks like an A, but I'll... Anyway. Um, 
And then, ooh, yeah, Savandra Things was the other one. And for Marshmallow World, I have the complete set of Roxy Floss conversion, which are beautiful colors. And I am stitching it on 16 count misty blue. And I finished my little marshmallow man. That's what he's doing. He's yawning. He's sleepy. So tired. He wants to go to bed. He's already got a sleep cap on. Mm -hmm. Um, And I also made a little error in this one, too. But you can't tell. You can't tell. No Why do we know. always tell on ourselves? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. I like the transparency. I know. In that shawl, so there's a Discord group for the people who are doing the, the Tunisian crochet uh, quick start, stitch along, yeah. camp, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so when I'm posting my updates in there, I would, I, when I, when I realized that I'd done, uh, the wrong stitch on those two row, two sections, I pointed it out and the designer's mm -hmm. like, oh, it's just personalized now. It's fine. Right. Like yeah. that's just it. I love designers like that. Some people do not like when you change a single thing. And I'm like, why are you making patterns for other people then? Because I, yeah, I personalize a lot of stuff, um, unintentionally. Yeah. It's just, it is what it is. Because there's some things where I'm like, oh, I I know that the mistake will be more, tr like, trying to fix the mistake will be more difficult than just fixing the mistake. Right. Um, and then there's some times where I'm like, it's fine. Yeah. So it totally depends on the project. And Yeah, some things have to come out. Some things how come far out. did I get right. before I realized my mistake? Yeah. yeah. And what, what? <laughs> What labor am I looking at to fix it? That's that's the deciding factor. Um, I also finished my two whip go calls for this month. So, or one of them was for last month. So, for May, I had got um, ten hours on Big Hearted Tiny Town. So I worked on this for ten hours. Since Stitch North, I didn't start, I didn't even get it out until I got home from Stitch North. So I basically got this out and I think I actually, I think I might've done 11 hours because I wanted to finish. You got a piece finished, yeah. I wanted to finish. How much you did? All I had was this house, this white and this flower. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You when I started so with that. done. And I'm doing it mostly. Are you the all the way to the side then with that fence? Yeah, that's yeah, my border. There's stuff to fill in, but you're at the edge. Okay. At that tight edge, but that's fine. That's fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Um, I um, I'm mostly doing it in the called fours. I have a few substitutions because just stuff that I didn't have and I wanted to use stash. Um, mm -hmm. it's all DMC. It was supposed to be fancy flosses and some that I don't use, so I just use the DMC conversion, and yeah. It's coming along really nice. I love it. And this is 28 count vintage beige that I got at Gita's a while ago. Like a Zweigart vintage beige? I believe so, yeah. Zweigart, yeah. Oh. And this, switching, switching back to stitching over two on 28 count uh, after the other one that I'll show you in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, that's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> So the other one that I'm working on is the Frosted Pumpkin Cottage. Um, I keep forgetting to put the picture of the Christmas one in here, but anyway. So it's basically like that, but I'm doing the festive version that was in the Winter Magic box. Um, don't look at the fabric. Um, and <laughs> and um, it um, basically the Christmas version has like it's Christmassy, right? Christmas garlands and the ghosts are wearing Santa hats. Um, so I worked on this for also 10 hours. And um, Look how Haley, much? Haley Tent Stitch was like, why don't you tent stitch it? And I was like, oh my God, you're a genius. Haley. So I started tent stitching it. Haley and changed Megan's life. That's so much done. <laughs> I I had to um this moon was like half done and in the festive pattern it's like red it's like 606 
Um, but I didn't like how that looked with the orange that I already had in there. So I just picked another different orange um, and did that. And then um, and then everything else is just the, the festive version. Look, so there's a green, look how much you did. You did so much. Garland. There's like red and green garland down here. Were you counting hours the same way when you started it? Like, do you yeah. know how long it took you to do the moon versus how long it's taking you to do everything else? That first bat took me two hours. Yeah, right? And, and then, then a little bit of the moon and that other bat, I think, was like another two hours. So four hours to do this tiny little bit. And then look how much you did in 10 hours. Yeah, 10 hours. Haley? Um, I, so I made, a, I made another error. Um, you did there, not. There's... 3865 and there's 822 and one of them was the color for the ghosts and one of them was the color for the snow and I have swapped them so well but if you stay consistent no one will ever know right and I don't I kind of like the look of the of the snow being like less bright white and having the the ghosts be the, more. the white white right I think it makes more sense that way you're that's probably why you're that's bringing what that's what I'm going with your brain was like, oh, I need the color for the ghosts. What's the brightest white? Right. Yeah. Yes. Um, but yeah, I like my little Santa hat ghosty. He's so cute. Yeah. The trees have been really fun um, to do like 10 stitch because it kind of gives it this like curved look. Because mm, you're not. Like a blocky yeah. look. Um, so I'm actually, I'm like really happy with that. So good. So um, good. Yeah. So this is... This will be, I'm going to work on this a lot more. I think now that I've kind of figured it out and doing the 10 stitches, oh, oh, so much easier. Uh, so those are my two goes for my last one for April and which is now done. And then my one for May. And then my other go for May was my seahorse that I had finished before in the previous video. So I am all caught up for go, which I'm very happy about. And then I did finally get out my natural yeah. world sal. And I worked on it for like two hours. And I got four beetles done. Um, and these are kind of annoying because they're very far apart. And I don't like counting on this is 40 count. And it's makes it a little harder to figure out exactly how far over you're supposed to go. Like it's fine, but it's annoying. Uh, I like it better when it's just like one stitch over. Um, but yeah, so I'm doing this on 40 count rubbed sage, which is also hand dyed by Rolanda. And my floss, I don't think I know the name of it. It's is just, there a name on the back of the tag? It just says D4. Okay, so. But it's silk and it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And it's purple and green and teal and it's been really good and I'm just stitching one strand over two so I'm gonna have a lot of that left over which I'm happy about mm. I'll use that again but my plan because I'm not gonna get caught up in June um I am going away for two weeks so I'm not gonna bring this with me because it is not fun oh, travel stitching I don't think <laughs> <laughs> um so I my plan will be to get caught up in July that I will dedicate will you stitch only on that in July until you're caught up because you will have right and my, whatever my whip goes months worth at that point yeah whatever my whip goes are and then this mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah that would be that would be great because mm -hmm. I like a couple of long stitching days on this and I it will goes be... it goes fast right yeah. like each of those drop like they're 65 by 65 ish right mm -hmm. they're not 100 percent consistent so they're it's not a huge amount no oh. Yeah, and the, and the two sections that are, are right, like you're you're gonna have that March border, but then the rest of it like none of the rest of the sections you'll have to address have that corner border. So yeah, and I will stitch on this like in June, like until I go. Um, I'm not gonna just like not touch it again, but I'm not gonna like won't be your focus. I'm gonna get a lot done on it. Yeah. Um, and then my last one was kind of a surprise that I just kind of pulled out um, because. <laughs> I was watching our whip parade because I like to watch our videos. I, I love them. And I watched our last video this morning. Yeah. Um, it was after Allie, um, the Misfits Stitchers said, oh, you should watch the Long Distance Stitchers because they have so many different projects. And I was like, do we? 
And then I went and watched Arab Parade and I was like, yeah, we do a lot of different projects. Um, so I pulled out this, there is always time for tea um, by Tiny Modernist. Cause I saw it on Arab Parade and I was like, I could work on that. And I pretty much finished it. Um, I just needs to fill in this, what's left here, all white. So this will be a great fill in project. Are you taking that one on your trip? I don't think so. I think I'm gonna finish it before I go. Oh, you will finish. Okay. I'm gonna. I I kind of want to just keep going until it's done, because it's really fun to work on, and I really like the colors. It's very pretty. Yeah, and I figured out what I'm gonna do for the, because I was gonna change the writing on the second one for coffee, because I'm not gonna do that banner. Um, so I think I'm just gonna do coffee time in the pink, and then just do because I like having the. I was gonna do like time for coffee, but I like having the beans and the word coffee together. I think that looks good. So now I'm just gonna do coffee time and then the, the coffee cup. So, That's great. Yeah, so now I, yeah, but I liked working on- Are you seeing them on the same piece, like as one full thing? Um, I think I might space them enough so that I can cut them and then do like two little framed okay. like, yeah. things or something like that, but yeah. Yeah, this one was, great. This was like this was like an afternoon. This was like four hours, I love and it. all I, all I had before was just this top, these flowers and time for. So I did tea and everything here. Yeah. So yeah. Do you think in the last little bit that your like stitching speed has accelerated, or are you just spending I more time stitching? I know I've gotten faster. I've gotten better, and. I don't like I'm counting quicker I think before I right like counting over to something was like the Daunting. most stressful yeah. part of it for me and I was like how do I and then now I just kind of like is right I'm like yeah that looks like two and then I'll double check and it'll be right and yeah because my my mind sees the squares better now Great. as well I like love I love it yeah and also stitching Little on baby stitcher bag and just growing up. I'm so and proud. Also, right. And like stitching on harder things, going back to easy stuff. Yeah. Like this is 14 yeah. count. And I'm like, it's like joke. It's like dessert, right? Like exactly. It's hard work to eat all your vegetables. And then you get That's your why dinner. I just like have been zipping through some of these older projects because I'm like, oh, this is child's play. Like yeah. I can do this. And before I would be like, oh my God, this is, I'm getting, like, I'm stressing Still myself. Is just expanding it. and you're yeah. doing things better. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I've definitely gotten faster and just, yeah. And just better also, like, just a faster stitcher, like just putting. That, yeah, that's like, yeah. so your confidence is building, you're faster at it because mm -hmm. you have a better sense of what you're doing. You're counting better, right? Because yeah. like. Even just since we started Flosstube, the number of projects you're working on and the progress you're making is just, right? So I'm so proud. And also I want to have stuff to show. So, so you're I'm motivated. <laughs> I need to show things to the people. Yeah. What am I going to talk about on our Flosstube? <laughs> and that, yeah, those were all my whips. That's everything I worked on this, this month. It was a good month. So that brings us to the haul portion of the video. Um, so I I have a scattering of things. So I will I will go through my things, and then Megan has a scattering of things, and she two, made a very important bags. shopping trip this morning. Two bags. I, two bags. I have two bags of shopping. That's all. Um, I did say when we last filmed that I just show a couple more things from D and Kari's box um, for spring fling. So we got this beautiful car. Um, with the right like with the original art from Kari on it and it's just a little thank you on the back so I will add this too I have a whole collection of Kari prints because I am a um, Patreon of hers at the level where you get a gift every quarter um, and often she sends us a print um, and so I've got a whole bunch of Kari prints I have to decide what to do with because they are beautiful um, and I don't want them just like right now they just sit in a pile right um, and so I got to figure out what to do with them the other pattern, which I know we showed in our last floss tube um, that we go on, the bigger pattern, um, but it's here as well. I've got the Stavanger Things um, floss. 
um, that uh, goes with this pattern. Mm -hmm. but, um, they sent us some pins as well um, to go with it. And there was also scissors. Those are already out and upstairs. Um, but we also got these really lovely stickers. So I will. I love those. I will probably add at least one of these to my sticker collection on my sewing machine, oh, yeah. uh, which is the best place to put all my very important vinyl stickers because I can see them all the time. They won't get wrecked. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful, but I'm I really running out of space. Like, like the front and the sides have some like small spaces left like yeah. for filler, um, but I am quickly filling up the back. I don't I don't know where they're gonna go when I'm done that. Yeah. I'll have to buy a newer serger maybe with a cover. I'm not gonna buy a serger just to put stickers on it. So that was that. Um, after, um, after Stitch North, Megan and I made a trip out to Gita's, um, which is uh, in Mississauga. No, it's it's called Port Credit, but it's like a town, but it's it's Mississauga. Yeah, and it's on the river, right? Yeah. Like, um, it it's a cute little cute little town. Mm -hmm. Um, but I got I'm gonna take it out of the bag because I think it's gonna have a lot of glare. I got a few things there, um, some of which I don't actually have because I've been doing some reorganizing and stuff since I got home, and I couldn't find it this morning, and so whatever thing, things are places there, there's there's plenty for you to see but I got this uh, another year creeps by by ink circles so this is a bit of an older pattern I think 2020 so I guess not that old um I know Tracy released this with stitchy box as like a year-long thing but I really like some of these designs I'm gonna hold it really close you can see there's like um like uh needles and a vial of medicine these are little coffins these are like little poisonous mushrooms, some bones, right? Like they're, so they're, they're, they're creepy things. So I'm not gonna, I'm probably not gonna stitch this and I probably won't stitch all of them, but I thought that some of these would make very cute little biscornies. So that's my plan for that. Um, and like by themselves, I think they're like 50 by 50, right? They're not, they're not very big. Um, so they should be, fairly quick stitching when I when I get around to deciding to do it. So that's that pattern. Um, I also bought, so we showed this, I'm gonna show it really quickly again, Michelle's um, Stitch North freebie, which was the inspiration for our peacock. Um, and so uh, the peacock on here, I thought should be in colors that match this peacock. And so I bought threads to do it with. See, look, look. Very good inspiration. So first I found this Threadworks, which is 1138. It has a name, it's not on there. I haven't looked it up, but it was basically all the colors in the peacock. Um, and then, so I used that, I matched it with, I got a couple uh, skeins of Valdani, which matched the purples and the greens in there. And then just to add a bit of bling to it, I got some Silk Lame braid. Um, I don't know. But so that's what I'm going to do my peacock in. I haven't started it yet because there's 8,000 patterns, but now it's a little kit. I just need a piece of fabric, um, but it's not very big. So I can just use something from my scrap bag. Mm -hmm. And then another thing I decided to do while I was there, because I see this stitched up and I love it a lot. And I'm not like a big fancy lady person, but I really like this one. Cathedral See, Woods Goddess. Two other people that are working on that since you bought this. Yeah, right? And like it's gorgeous. And this is one of her more blingy ones, right? Like there is a lot of beads and a lot of crinix and there's some special jewels in there, right? Like they're um I wouldn't say a hundred percent, but I think there might be more crinic and beads than just DMC stitches in this one. Yeah. Probably, probably. not, but like that's the the look it gets at the end yeah I love it I'm going to do a skin tone conversion on her I haven't exactly decided what yet um and I might change her dress color as well um mm. to something more green less teal but again I'm gonna play with those colors as I get there I'm not planning to start this anytime soon I have my big angel of love fancy lady but 
It's not I bought it because these do go out of print eventually, right? And then they become very expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and then just while we were there, because we were there, and it's nice to kit things up, I bought a 32 count toasted almond um, for her to go on. It's a little bit darker than the called for fabric, um, which is French latte. But um, I really liked the like sort of red undertone to this. Um, I think it will match some of the browns and golds mm -hmm. very nicely. And then because I do not like Krynik, I took the opportunity of being in a real life stitching store. I pulled the Krynik and then I matched it to the closest color of treasure braid. Um, and then I've got a note on the back of which Krynik um, each of these were. So, you know, when I do start it, I don't forget um, yeah. what I was doing. Um, and then treasure braid is pretty consistent in color. So I'm not hundred percent sure if there'll be enough of this cause I'm gonna have to use it um, too oh, strong. Yeah but uh, I'll be able to order more if I need mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. And then I also got, so there's a few, oh, there's just two. There's two Caron water lilies. They only had one in stock, but I bought the one that they have. This is slate is the color. Um, the pattern only gives the numbers, but so slate. And I bought the beads that they had in stock. Again, there, there's more beads that this needs. Um, but this some of the beads, um, and it's actually not bad that some of the beads were in stock because now I can check my little bead stash because I might have some of the colors already before I go and order the rest. But I'm in no rush. She exists in my collection, and that's what she is. Um, so that is that. And then after not after, like in the middle of my time in Ontario. Uh, my sister lives in Ontario, so I rented a car and I jetted up to see her, but I had some time to kill. So I stopped in Barrie um, and went to the True North Yarn Company and I behaved myself. I did not overbuy, but I could not not get these. <laughs> so this is, uh, Malabrigo uh, just sock yarn um, in the colors. Are the names not on here? I thought the names were on here. Oh, it's right on there. I've been showing you the whole time while I've been looking. So this one, the deeper one is Wales Road and this one is Ursula. Um, and the purples in them go nicely together. And so I bought this uh, specifically to make a certain uh, scarf pattern that I have, so. Watch for that at some point in the future. I love them. Um, Very you. Very good colors. Gucci yarn. So that's yeah. my Ontario post Stitch North purchases, I think. Um, I also have my loss of the month from Hand I by Rolanda. Um, and so I will show those again. She never puts a name on them, so they're just they are what they are. Um, she'll sometimes post extras on her shop, so like her Etsy store. So if you like a set any month, you might want to keep an eye out um, to see if she posts the extras. But those are the colors and oh, I think this yeah. is a beautiful set of colors. So sometimes I just put them all on my ring, which I sort of keep by color of her mm -hmm. stuff because they're not named or anything. And sometimes I keep them in the set that they come in. This one, I think I will keep in the set that it comes in in case there's mm -hmm. something I want to do with them all. So they're beautiful. Yeah, those are great. Those are yeah. very nice. Um, that's that. And then Let's talk about some electronic purchases that I have made. So I bought um, this Quirky Quaker, the oh, nice. Eldritch. I'm saying that terribly. Deanna, please laugh your ass off at me. Um, but uh, this is a cryptid uh, Quirky Quaker. Um, and so I've done her four other uh, Darlene and Whimsy Designs uh, Quirky Quakers. And so I want to do this one because I was inspired because 
I'm not going to do the quirky Quaker, not the quirky Quaker, the nine patch project thing that Stitch North is doing, not Stitch, oh. Ever Totes is collaborating with, um, there's a year schoolhouse designs, 18 something schoolhouse designs who did the Stitch North pattern kit that you could buy at Stitch North this year. Yeah. And that's the first of five patterns and they're doing a nine patch. And so I've had these other four quirky Quakers that I've finished, the oh. unicorn, the Loch Ness monster, the Sasquatch and the Yeti. Um, and I've been planning to make a little pillow out of them, but they're yeah. going to do a nine patch with these five patterns that they're doing with fabric for the other four patches. And I was like, there is a fifth cryptid quirky Quaker at this point in time. I'm sure there's more on the list. There's, there's five patterns. I will find some good cryptid, uh, based cryptid, um, themed fabric, and I will make a pillow or a wall hanging or something, um, and do them a, ni a nine patch of them. And knowing how long it takes me to do things, maybe there will be more cryptid quirky Quakers, uh, in the meantime, and maybe eventually I will make a quilt out of all of the, uh, nine of them, maybe. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge, uh, put it on the list. So that was one of my most recent purchases. Um, another purchase is, and this uh, plays into our plans, but I'll show it here now and we will talk about plans in a little bit. I have purchased uh, Summer Quaker from Lila's studio. Um, I love this so much. Um, I have always liked like her Halloween Quaker and her holiday Quaker and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. But this yeah. is just, it just speaks to me. Um, the ocean side, the whale, the mermaid, this cute little octopus, all these little crustacean critters uh, in the in the border. So um, we will speak more about that in a moment. But I will say, so my fabric of the month from Kaylee this month. So I I had thought about when I sort of decided I was gonna I was gonna start this. I'll be starting it in June. Um, I was like, oh, but I don't really know if I have a right fabric for it. I want something that's kind of bluish, kind of not, um, like blue gray or whatever, um, rather than the the like neutral background that it's on. And I was like, I don't really think that I have anything. And I was like, no, Megan, you don't need any more fabric because I kind of played with the idea of asking Kaylee to dye something for me. And then mm. my fabric of the month shows up and it's this. It's perfect. Kaylee read my mind. I told her. I was like, Kaylee. <laughs> it's the right size? Oh yeah, it's way big for what yeah. I Oh um, perfect. Well, it's good because it's uh it's an 18 count. So Oh yeah, um, you're good. Yeah, yeah. So I love it so much. So I am going to and the the pattern's all DMC, so I will get that kitted up in no time. Um so that I am ready to start it. Um and we'll we'll chat about that in a minute. Um and then the Bag of the month while we're on Kaylee Crossage. So at Stitch North, Kaylee brought just a broad selection of her bags. She has the best fabrics um, and she makes the best bags as you have heard us drone on about many times before. Um, and then, so I, I, I foolishly went to see Kaylee without any way of paying her the first time, like when she set up, I was just excited to meet her. So I was like, Kaylee's here. I'm gonna go meet Kaylee in person, awesome. And so I looked through all the stuff and I was like, I have no way of paying for you. I'm gonna go get my stuff and come back. By the time I got back, the bag I wanted was already purchased by our friend Kim, Crafty, D, Crafty Teacher DIYs, which is fine because Kaylee and I had a lot of conversations about bags this weekend and she took some notes and she went home and for my fabric or my bag of the month for May, she sent me one with the same fabric I wanted with this beautiful platypus. I love the well, bag shape. So she sent me this one that is longer and wider. Yeah. Right. To fit different different sizes of frames in different bags, right? So I love I this. Love so this by eleven. This pattern on the back is like the bigger version of this inner pattern, and it's just little creatures so down under cute. creatures having a uh wintry good time. I love him. I love it. Thank you so much, Kaylee. Um, so I might just house my summer Quaker in here. Um just because, you know it already goes together. Mm -hmm. Perfect. As speaking of Kaylee, our Kaylee goes and posts about these new kits that she's making with Brooke Lynn Stormy, who is an artist. Uh, you can go follow her on Instagram. I gave her an Insta follow. And like, this is the first of the pictures and I'm like, oh, those burbs are amazing, right? 
And then you click through and there is this super side eye shady girl and her bird. And they are just giving you the eye. And that's amazing. This border kills me. It's gorgeous. But then this. What? It is so good. This dude, his stuff, he's riding a caterpillar, this caterpillar's face, this eye, these nice crazy tree flower things. I love everything about this. So I instantly reshared this and then went to her shop and bought it. So I bought the full kit. Um, you can get the kit. Um, and she's selling them with the background and without. I um, chose the without the background because then you can get mm -hmm. it with one of her beautiful fabrics. Um, and so she's chosen some fabrics that she has that will make good backgrounds. Um, I went for the 18 count Ada. I like this bright green. Um, yeah, that's great. Very, very excited that's about fast. this. Yeah. Um, and uh, she does the full kit. So it comes with the pattern, the fabric, the gloss. Um, she includes a free bag. With her. so I will be getting another bag so it it'll come all housed so anyways I reposted it and Michelle was like what and Michelle also immediately bought this kit so we will be uh co-hosting our start along and we are going to call it we don't want to limit people just to the caterpillar right if the birds or the the judgy shady uh girl and her bird really speak to you more than the caterpillar lad so our hashtag is going to be judgy caterpillar burbs sal and i will try and remember to put it like on the screen but hashtag judgy caterpillar burb sal so um i am going to focus on things but when he shows up he's getting started right and i might do a center start so i can get to that caterpillar's face like mm -hmm. immediately so i love that um that brings us i believe to the end of my haul Joe. I'm at the end. It's great. I'm proud of you. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, I also went to Gita's. When you went to Gita's, I bought some things. I'll start with my patterns. So I had a list of patterns that I was looking for. Um, that I and um at Stitch North and there was none. Um, so I but when we were at Gita's, um they had a bunch of ones that I had been looking for. Um, so they had this one from Tiny Modernist, um, which is the Tropical Christmas. They're so cute. Um, and I saw uh, Julie, Kansas City Girl in Colorado World Stitch. I think she did the palm tree as part of her like Christmas ornament palooza that she did last year. And I was like, I'm obsessed. I need that right now. Um, I also picked up the folk calendar from Tiny Modernist, um, which I'm really excited about. Um, I'm going to make my own little like entryway, like display calendar thingy. So then each month I'll change it out for one of these. And I saw somebody else, I can't remember who, ugh. so like somebody else had done the same thing, but with like a different like monthly, pattern lots, lots of people um, do it. yeah yeah and so then I was looking at like all the various options for like a, a year-long thing and so many of the ones have like a very patriotic July square which I am Canadian I don't want that in my and it's like you know I didn't want to like have to change it um this July is it has a lighthouse and a sunflower and nothing else. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was, I had picked that one from, so I had been looking for that one for a while. So I was really glad to find that. And then I also got this little Biscornu. It's not technically on my list, but. Oh, perfect. Too cute. He's too cute. I couldn't leave You've him. caught the Biscornu craze is what. what yeah. I haven't even started the skunk that I already got. <laughs> um, but I'll have, I'll have like a Biscornu month sometime and i'll just work on all those and those little biscornus they go quick because they're they're small patterns to begin with there's a lot of white space in them yeah yeah i also really want to get the hedgehog biscornu from tiny modernist and then i will have all my 
the square on those. Um, so I get as I picked up some etoile because my Michaels doesn't have a lot of etoile. We're often um, sold out. Um, and she had a they had a few colors that I hadn't been able to grab yet. So I got those. And I also got some of the new um, DMC colors. So these are all 3885 and above. So it's 3885, 3886, 3891, and 3892. Um, I was looking for 3890, which is the one that D calls for in their Let's Make a Statement uh, Sal, but that they didn't, or not Sal, but series and but they didn't have those on but they had these so I was like okay great because my my Michaels doesn't even have like spots for they anything. might have um those ones were originally released in a box so yeah. look at the boxes of threads they might have those if you get that box of thread with a 30 percent off coupon you're paying like not very much for for all the floss in there so. yeah I should really look at the boxes more when I'm there I kind of just like the other them. boxes are just the other colors, right? But there's the one box that has the 3800 yeah. series in it. I don't think I've ever seen that one there. Yeah. I have looked before and I don't think well, it was. Well, I know it was at my Michaels this last week and I thought about buying it. I have the whole series and I was like, these are hard to find. But I was like, Megan, chill. <laughs> I do have to, there's a couple of things I need to kit up with DMC, so I'll have to go back. But we'll see. Um, and then I also got some Silk Lame braid. I got just random. I got blue and green. Um, not for anything, just because I like them. And I also got some treasure braid, some very bright tropical orange and teal colors. Again, not for anything. Just, just to make something sparkle. Them. I got some more silkies. So I got the green one that I already showed you. And I got this blue 401. 4014, which is not Peacock, but it's like the one, like yes. Peacock is like slightly different. Um, this one, which is um, Miriam's favorite color, this is that chestnut. Um, and this one is 4102, and it's a very light, like pastel. Showing that one's variegated, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's getting blown blown out. There we go. Yeah. Very pretty. And I got some other random flosses. So I got <laughs> Autumn Leaves by Gentle Art, which is the exact same color as that Lassie Mags from Brennan Needle that I bought two skeins of. I can't, I, right? I see this color. Oh, and you stay on brand, right? You're consistent. <laughs> Why am I obsessed with this color? I'm the same way with purple. Like, if, like you'll see in a minute, anything purple, I'm like, oh, I have to have that. Um, even though I have a million of it already, whatever, who cares? I'm obviously going to stitch with it. This, um, this is from Creeks Colors, which I had not heard of before. So I, and I liked that. It's very similar to the Sulky, but it's like a little bit slightly different. Um, and these are just, this is just cotton. And then I got this silks in colors the, from the Thread Gatherer. This is called Kenty Cloth. It's um, really pretty. Very, yeah, it's got a lot of different colors in there. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that'll be fun to, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna stitch with any of these. Um, and I wasn't even gonna look at fabric. I don't need more fabric. I have lots, but I'm a sucker for an, an off cut. Um, so <laughs> I started looking at the off cuts and this one was only $6. And I was like, yeah, give it to me. Um, and it is, it's a Lugana. Um, the, the color is not on here. It's 28 camp and it's six by 27. <laughs> so it's perfect. Find a bell pole. It's, yeah, it's perfect for either one long thing or a bunch of little things. Like I could do a bunch of Quakers on here. So yeah. You could you could do the Quakers on there as a bell pull, right? Like you could pick oh, a yeah, I could, yeah, just like plan to like have it be like a long thing. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, like it's 28, so it's you know, it'll be big, whatever it is. And then I started looking at other things in the same pile and I was kind of I would kept convincing myself that I don't have any green fabric. I guess I forgot completely about this one. Um, because I bought this one, 
which is almost exactly the same, but whatever. Um, this is Pictureless Plus Highland, I think it says. Mm -hmm. um, and it was already cut and they just surged it for me. And it's a pretty big, pretty big piece. This is, oh man, she didn't put the name on. She didn't put the size on here, but they measured it. Like it was labeled as something. And then I was like, oh, I think it's not that size anymore because it had been cut. So they had to figure out how big it actually was. And then I also bought this was also picture this plus moss. And this was also like a cut already cut piece. I really like that green. Yeah, it's so good. I think these two I was thinking would be good for my some of my in the woods series. Oh yeah. Yeah. This like the bear would maybe be good in that. Mm -hmm. And then they had this Zweigart uh Murano bright orange, which I oh, think good. is so fun and like Halloween stuff, like anything, right? And this is a 28 count and this is 19 by 27. So it's also pretty big. So that's that's good because I don't have a lot of big pieces of fabric because I keep buying random already cut weird <laughs> ones. <laughs> um, and then they also had this um, 16 count Calypso, which so was... Pretty um the called for for another thing that i've already started um because i couldn't find it before um but i'm gonna do my my tropical things on this yeah it'll look great and they'll all fit so that was my gita's haul but wait there's <laughs> more um and then earlier today I went to a pop-up shop. Um, so Kim at Designs, who was at Stitch North, um, who are great, we love them, um, have recently outfitted their mobile trailer so that they can go do like little pop-up shops all over the world. I, um, I think they should come here. I think they should just make a cross-country trip going to and Winnipeg. all sorts of things to shop. Oh, yeah, they're they're oh going for the to embroidery your... guild thing? Yeah, yeah that's cool. and I mean, oh, who knows? Once you're on the road. I'm, um, I'm only 20 hours away from Winnipeg. Right? They can stop a lot of places along the way. Right? No, they can't stop it. Just, they have to come all the way to me, sell me all the stuff, and then stop everywhere else on the way back. Because if they stop on the way there, they won't have anything left to sell to me. True. Unless they get, like, shipments sent out. Yeah. <laughs> um, along the way. <laughs> yeah. Or they can, like, stop at another store and buy a bunch of their stuff. I don't know. Anyway. I don't think, um, that's, I don't think that's good for the bottom line yeah so i was on their website when we were doing our last episode because i was putting a link to their site in our description box and they had a thing where they were like oh we're gonna be at the beaches sewing center at the end of the month and i was like my beaches sewing center i live in the beaches there can't be more than one beach sewing center so i looked it up and it's the one that's like literally like down the road from me um and it was this morning and I had the couldn't day off. You like, couldn't not go. It was gotta go. yeah. I gotta go and I gotta spend all my money. Um so the first thing I did was I looked at their I walked up and they had like a table set up just like outside the trailer and they had like a bins full of patterns. So I just started looking through patterns first thing. I got ah, the they had wow. just gotten a restock of okay. these ones because they had oh, we didn't have them. Good. They didn't have them in Stitch North because I looked for these. Yeah. Um, they had the polar bear and the walrus as well, but I'm just going to start with the whale because um, I think I'm also going to do the puffins. I don't know if I'm going to do all five. And there's going to be a sixth one. I was talking to Megan, the girl at the shop, and she was like, oh, there's going to be a sixth one that's like a charity one. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to start with the whale and then I'll see how I get on. So I got the whale. And then I got beach fobs from uh heartstring samplery i have loved these for so long i have almost bought them a couple of times and then i saw them there and i was like the day i will have those mm -hmm. yes and then also from heartstring samplery i just saw these the other day i think they're new but i am obsessed i love these little merry burbs they are so cute look they're decorating their houses for christmas 
<laughs> They're so, so cute. Um, and then this one, which has also been on my list for a really long time, uh, Deep Water by Sweet Wing. Sweet. I don't think I've ever seen that one. Yeah. Um, this is a Bible verse, so I'm probably going to change it or just not stitch it, just stitch more water. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's super cute. I love that little octopus. I love that little crab. Good. And then this one is also new. Oh, yes. Those. <laughs> Have to, this I almost bought this at one two three stitch. It was like in my cart, yeah. and then I was like, "Oh, Those little dog sounds." There's a bunch of these little wiener dog oh, ones. Know, it's I like know. yeah, there's like sweater weather. And they're and all honey, you know, right? Like I'm. I work at Starbucks. Mm -hmm. I had to have the Starbucks. So yeah, I'm very happy with my my pattern of purchases because I haven't bought any patterns in a while. Uh, <laughs> And then they were like, no, you were running out. You didn't have anything left to start. Right? There's so many things. I don't have anything to stitch. Um, and then I was looking through, they had like a bin of um, silks outside. They had like, um, I think water lilies. Is water lilies of silk? Yeah. So they had those ones and they had another brand in there. And then I was like, oh, I want dinky dyes because I was looking for them. And they were like, oh, there's more stuff in, in the trailer. And then I was like, oh, where, like, did you bring like do you have dinky dyes and they're like oh we didn't bring them and i was like it's fine i will find other things to purchase um but then they were like oh but we have these silks that are on sale that might be dinky dyes we don't actually know what they are um but they are five dollars a skein and so i was like all right fine i'll buy a bunch of those um uh, i bought very similar colors but also very beautiful they are and really nice I think if they are dinky dyes, this is that one that people were using for the trans let's make oh, a statement. Yeah. Because it's yeah. the pink and the blue together. So I'm I'm curious if if they are, if that's what that is. Um I might try to find out what they actually are. It doesn't really matter. They're beautiful. I'll use them. Um and then I was looking at the other, so they didn't have a lot, like they had a lot of gentle art. They had bins and bins and bins of gentle art, but I was like, I don't even know what I need. I'll just end up picking random colors of mm -hmm. things that I probably already have. Um, but then they also had um, all of these cottage gardens. And since I was prepared to like spend a pretty penny on some dicky dyes, I was like, well, let me just look through look the cottage them. gardens. And I got some beautiful colors. I love them all. Good yes. choices. They're very good to stitch with, and yeah. I love cottage garden. I definitely have enjoyed stitching on with them already. And then I started looking through the offcuts, um, and I got, well, this one isn't, this one is a normal size. So this one is 18 by 27, and it's just like a blue, like a very light blue 28 count, which I can never have too much solid color. Yep. So now I need to do this yep. guy, right? Who knows? Um, this one is seven by thirty-four. So another, yeah, <laughs> banner. Um, it might be good for some of my trans prides. Oh yeah, yeah. Right, it's got that dark blue. This is a twenty-eight count, so it's a little bit. Yeah, it's yeah, but it'll be good. And it was ten dollars. Like, yeah, give me that weird ass cut for zero, like for no money. This is a fourteen count. 8.5 by 9 and it was oh, 375 perfect. one little one little right? ornament. perfect like a perfect. little christmas ornament perfect and then this one was uh seven dollars and it's it's a new color from dmc and it's just like an even weave 25 count which i was like oh it'll be perfect for like some of my over one stitching that i'm sure i'll do um and i might put my my little yeah Yep, the verbs on there. Why not? And yeah, that was my shopping from this morning. Just and down the road. A little stroll down the road and I got Imagine to buy how all dangerous this. It would be like people who live close to LNS's. How do you not spend all your money there? Or do you just spend all your money there? Right? Like every how time I go. Work? I'm buying as if I'm never going to see an LNS for the rest of my life, mm -hmm. right? So if I was there every couple of days, 
I would be like, maybe, oh, I maybe, right, maybe when you know you can just go and get it, you don't feel like you have to buy as much. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Like, maybe. Yeah. Like, I'm definitely like, it's like you're starving and there's, you know, right? Like, you're gonna. Yeah. So. Yeah. But they, I was, I was one of the first people to show up this morning. Um, and they were like still kind of like setting stuff up. And so I was like, well, I hope you guys have a great day of selling lots of things. And I'm glad I was there early to grab some of the stuff that they, like those patterns, they only had one of each one. So, yeah. so there you go. Just imagine if I had waited even a half an hour. Right. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that's everything I bought, but I, I'm going to share, um, it hasn't arrived in my house yet. Um, but since you were talking about your summer Quaker, I haven't bought the pattern yet. I'm just going to get the PDF, but I did make my purchase of, of um, the fabric that I want. And it's from Hand Dyed by Rolanda. And it's called Dusty Aqua. You can kind of see there's like little bits of green. Yeah, it's got that undertone there. to it. Yeah, so that's what I'm getting. And I, I also chose 18 count. Um, so they'll be the same size. Excellent. Um, and that is on its way to me, so I can kit that up and start that. I love it. Maybe next month. Yeah. Who knows? Is that our segue into plans? Yeah. Okay. So, as I said, I'm going to be starting, and now you've just heard that Megan is also starting the Summer Quaker from Lila Studio. And that's because I have a birthday coming up. So in June my birthday uh falls on june 20th so i am essentially a solstice baby some years it's the solstice some years it's not and so it only makes sense to start the summer quaker um in relation to the summer solstice i know that there is a big stitch along start along plan for august uh that samantha the hugest stitcher um is spearheading so i will i will jump on that hashtag when it is time but i'm going to start mine on my birthday so yeah. we get all kitted up and ready to go. And you may or may not see a special episode um, of a new floss tube called the Extra Long Distance Stitchers. Stay tuned. Um, so that, that is a plan. I'm going to start my Caterpillar plaid as soon as he shows up, right? That is going to be an immediate start. Those are my only two starts cross-stitch-wise planned. I am trying to make myself my first, um, like, yarn-made garment. So I'm doing a Tunisian crochet top, but I have not gauged it very well so I need to go back to the drawing table in terms of what my gauge is so um, there may or may not be progress on that for me and then as I already talked about I want to continue working on Spring's Promise because I'm really enjoying working on that as well as get caught up in June get caught up on the natural world south those are my plans my squirrely brain might take me in many different directions I was looking the other day so if you watched our whip parade at the start of the year and when we talked about plans and that, I was like, oh, I will have 40, I have 40 projects going into 2023 for my 40th birthday. That's how old I am turning. And I'm gonna see how many of these I can finish by the end of the year. So in my book of days, I made myself a little table. And so it's got all down this, this side, all my patterns. And it's got all the months. And if you look closely, you probably can't see very well. I have not worked on very much. So of these 40 things, I thought I thought I could finish 20 of them, right? And so we are now at the end of May. I have finished three, right? So I finished Autumn Royalty right away in January when I was still motivated. I finished uh, Wonky Cot, Cat, Wonky Cot, Wonky Cat in March, and I finished my Iron Maiden in April in preparation of Spring Fling number two. Yeah. Um, I have my two all year projects on there. So my chaos burps, which you will notice we're missing. Mm -hmm. Right. So think about the last time you saw them. Think about how, how many birds I have to stitch in my natural world, Sal. And then I've got all these other projects. So I might spend some time on some of my whips rather than new starts. Because when I look at the back of my book, I also made a table to put all my new starts in. Again, I don't know if you can see it very well, but of all the things I've started this year, so many of them have finishes. There are three things without finishes. Oh, four things. My heart sampler that I started, my necessity, Spring's Promise, and We Still Go On. Spring's Promise and We Still Go On are small. Those will get done this year as well. The other two mm -hmm. are bigger. Well, my necessity, actually, if I sit down and stitch it, 
um to come along yeah. art sampler was always intended like that's a multi-year project it's a it's a big one right yeah. cow pedal lad summer's quaker also big projects um so those won't be finished but i have been doing a lot of starting and finishing projects yeah. right and so i need to maybe instead of being so squirrely work on some of my old projects i stitched them for a reason my friend petra who watches hey petra um has been stitching exclusively um the jackalope in tapestry by lindy stitches and she is almost done and i'm very excited to see her finish uh she has she has instructed me that i am to share it with you as well megan because she has been influenced by us and she now has several patterns in the queue so i'm excited to see what those are as well um but um so that, right, like my Jackalopian tapestry, there's not that much left on it. I am more than 50% done that, right? So like, I just need to pull these things out and work on them. So I'm trying to tell my brain that it's okay to not start all the things. We will see what my brain thinks about that. Those yeah. are my plans at this point in time. How about you, Megan? Okay, so I'm going to start somewhere quicker. Um, I'm going to start it while I'm in Germany. Although everybody is allowed to start with us. If you, if you're yeah. planning to start and you're planning to start with Samantha, like no hard feelings because she's been, she's been on that summer quicker, like since the moment she saw that pattern, she's like, I'm doing a start along. So, um, it's, it's her thing, but, um, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to start it on your birthday because it's your birthday, Sal. And then I probably won't work on it again until the, yeah. the other Sal starts in August. Yeah. I have too many things already to work mm -hmm. um i'm gonna continue my couple of whips that i uh talked about my starts that i was like oh i want to finish this part of it and then i'm gonna put it away so I'll, I'll keep working on those little things um i would really love to finish bloom um five mislead like pages because you're basically done already right it's not big it's and not i think much. right like once i take out those letters and put them back in i'm mm -hmm. like cruising to a finish um, probably not going to work on any of the other things that I showed. Like, I'm not going to work on Marshmallow World again because it's a Christmas thing. Um, I might work on my spring fling, just at least finish that thread that's dangling. <laughs> that might be a good one to take on your trip, though, because you are stitching it in hand. So to that, um, I have another project that I want to start that I'm also going to stitch in hand. Um, but that's part of, so there's a flamingo. Birding. Flamingo Summer Sal. So I'm going to do my flamingos all the way that I've had kitted up for literally forever. Mm -hmm. um, and it's little because it's just an ornament. And so it's just on this little piece of, right? It's so small. It's so perfect. I'm going to, I'm going to bring it and I'm going to stitch in hand to yeah, a finish on that. And I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I'm going to like put all of these on like a floss card and like have them like pre-cut and ready to go so it'll basically be like a kit and yeah and if you're if you're stitching in a place where it's awkward to take out your scissors and stuff if you if, it, if the floss is pre-cut you can leave your tails hanging i know yeah. some people really can't but you can leave your tails hanging until you can trim them here um <laughs> yeah and so yeah it's just on this little card like it, it's gonna be so easy and i could also like just take a picture and like have it on my phone or like whatever i need to do yeah. Um, I figured that would be a really good train project. So I'll be spending a lot of time on the train. Well, not a lot of time. The trains are really fast in Germany. Um, <laughs> um, but I'm also going to bring some of my other kits. So I'm going to bring this one. Um, it's right. It's just on wood. I don't need a hoop or anything. It's just going to be really easy. I'm, I think I'm going to leave like the finishing stuff here. Yeah, just take what you need to bring the cloth it. and the thing. And then again, I might just take a picture of the pattern and have mm -hmm. that. Um, and then I wanna, I wanna do my my Highland coos because um, they're so cute. And again, I'll put all of the flosses on like a card so I can just like throw it in my bag. Um, but yeah, it's like it's on the bookmark, like it's already cut, like everything yeah. is like ready to go. And then again, I'll just like leave the felt at home. And I was like. Cause I'm going to try to do this with like as few bags as possible. So I don't want to bring that much stuff. And then if I you could fit some, all of those projects into one small project bag, I'm like, I could fit them in here with this. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I might bring this. I'm, I haven't decided yet. We'll see. Um, and then I really want to work on, like, I'm going to do the, the summer Quaker. So I'll bring 
the fabric and like just one floss Bring whatever you're doing for the dark blue right like yeah. that. So I'm just going to start in the corner yeah. and just do like a little bit down the side. <laughs> then I'll just have like that giant piece of fabric, just whatever. It's like a t-shirt. <laughs> Roll it up. It's fine. Um, and my, my two um, whip go calls for June. So one is um, not, <laughs> not really a summer project, but it's fine. I'll work on it. Um, is this Christmas where is she the Christmas Village by Jenny Van Oh Wheel, yeah which I do enjoy stitching on. Mm -hmm. I like her. Um and it's it's on a 16 count it's on misty blue same as my marshmallows um and this is where I'm at with that one so I was thinking I could even go down and just do this um, big skating rink um, because I need that color for uh, another project. <laughs> I want to steal it because I know I'm not going to use the whole thing. Um, and I don't have to buy too much extra stuff. And then my other, my other whip go call is the fruit sampler. Um, which oh, could yeah. also be a good travel project, but I'm at this point I'm bringing so much stuff. I don't know. Yeah, right. Like you're gone for two weeks. You don't need eight hundred. Not gonna stitch every day. Don't pack like I packed to come to Ontario. <laughs> like right, like realistically, if I get a couple of good days in, I could finish those three mm -hmm. things that I brought. But I'm not. I don't think I'm gonna stitch that much. It'll just be nice sometimes to have some stitching to do. There's also so. the airplane. gonna be a long plan mm -hmm. um and then i have a new start that i'm really excited about i didn't show this in my haul oh i forgot about my purchases my digital purchases oh. um i so i bought i was going through my patterns um my list of patterns that i wanted to buy and was kind of like eliminating things that like maybe I haven't looked at it in a while maybe I'm stitching something that's very similar I don't need a million Halloween patterns that are essentially the same um because that is what I tend to gravitate towards same thing with like the ocean theme theme ones like even that one with the octopus like I'm stitching a lot of things with mm -hmm. cute little octopuses on them like I don't need to stitch all of them um don't, don't so, <laughs> so I was kind of going through um my list of fat like before I was because I knew I was going to go to the store and so I was like maybe I'll like I'll eliminate some things from the list that I'm like I don't know that I actually need this right and then I can buy, buy more things that were not on the list um so one of the things that I that was on the list was Quakers in Scotland so I went to the website and it's by tempting what's she called tempting tangles and I looked at it and I was like, oh, I do still like this. Maybe I will still buy that. But then I scrolled a little bit and now she has one that's called Quakers in Scandinavia. And I was like, well, I'm not Scottish, but I am half Norwegian. So maybe I should stitch this one instead of the Scotland one. Um, and also it was on sale. It was only $9 versus the $18 for the other one um, because it's still like in sal format. So it's like in pieces. Um, so I was like, okay, perfect. I'm going to do that instead. And then I was like, oh, I need like a nice piece of fabric cord and da, 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 da. So I picked this one from my stash um, that I got in my winter magic box. And we've been playing with the flosses so I can figure out if it's going to look good. And I think I'll be okay with the colors not being too similar. And so I really want to start that this month and work on it a little bit before I go. So that's, yeah, so those are my, other, those are my other plans. Good choices. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is, that, is that it? Have we, have we said everything we need to say? That oh, it was my I was going to talk about, I got, so if, if you're hanging around the same people we hang around with, we're on a bit of a tarot kick. Right. 
Um, so uh, people are trading tarot cards. And so I just wanted to, I got from Deanna, she sent a cute little postcard from her museum, the Pharm Pharmacy Museum of Labrador and Newfoundland. Um, I love this. I really like this picture. And then I got in our trade, she has a botanical anatomy, I think is the tarot deck. It is so she pulled for me the two of cups which um talks about needing balance in your life and this could use a little balance so good pick Deanna but I just wanted to bring this up because if people want to trade tarot both Megan and I have tarot decks so send us a little dm on the instagram uh and we will happily trade tarot with you my trading deck is the crow tarot by MJ Pouillet um, and the cards in this are beautiful. So shoot me a message. We'll do a little trade Z. My my decks, I bought two. Um, and I got one is the pumpkin or the jack-o'-lantern tarot. And <laughs> that's the card that we traded. And then my other one is the Connolly tarot. So this one is like kind of like stained glass. Uh, looking ones and then this one is like all the cards have pumpkins on them um so yeah if you have a, a preference between these two oh, you're gonna trade from both decks yeah okay nice. i'm not really like i think that kind of makes it more like i don't know to, like rather than just being like only one or the other and then like I don't know. It, it's like let like let whatever happens happens. Like there's not any like, I like it's it. I like taking it. less control. Like more like yeah. yeah, taking the control away from it. So yeah, and I think it'll be really cool to see, like if people are like, oh, I think I like pumpkins more. I like whatever. So yeah. So yeah. So if you are in the tarot craze like we are, our Instagrams are below. Send us a little DM and we'll do a little tradesy. I am yeah. I'm willing to mail it. Pretty much anywhere. I'm not, yeah. It's just a little card. So, yeah. I know there's people all over the world. Like, Helen is in the UK. Mm -hmm. I don't know if she, does she trade or does she just pull she, her own card? She's trading. Okay. I, I was messaging her this morning. I need to do my poll for her and send it on its way. So, yes. Over, over the pond. Yes. Okay. I think that truly brings us to the end now. So thank you for sticking with us. If you were new and you made it all the way to the end, uh, thank you so much. We tend to talk a lot. So we make long episodes and we know they're not for everybody, but some people like them long and we're here for that. Um, if uh, if you want to hit the subscribe, we would love that. Uh, we're, we're nearing 200, which is I mean, our little corner of the internet is growing every day, basically, which is exciting. Um, and yeah, we will be back end of June, early July. We'll figure it out when Megan returns from her big adventure. Um, and yeah, we will have lots of things to show you. And we will see if we did what we thought we would do or if, if the squirrels got us. You never know. You never know around these parts. Mm -hmm. yeah. Stuff and, just shows up. And, and if you hit the subscribe button, there might be something else that pops up in the middle yeah. of the month so you know always worth uh sticking around to see what surprises we might have in store for you you never know don't okay thank you so much have a great whatever day it is for you and we will see you soon bye <laughs>